reason anybody would gossip is because it's so much harder to look in the mirror and address those issues. Mm -hmm. People said one thing when we got into this game. I want to do this. I want to be the best on stage or this and that. And then the, someone dangled a new carrot said hey, social media will get you ticket sales <laughs> yeah yeah a <laughs> hundred million followers people will think you're cool <laughs> i look for real world validation yeah not dude. fucking horseshit that somebody at a whim could be like you know what the thing that was validation yesterday we just moved the goalpost you need yeah. to do this and this and this a million followers isn't enough now you need 10 you need, yeah. you need 30 you need 50. Yo, you don't have 100 million followers? Bro, you're not yeah. successful. Hey, suck my big black <laughs> from the black. Johnny. <laughs> What's going on, man? Johnny. <laughs> this is why I love chatting with another podcaster because you put work into your background. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a picture of you real quick. Yeah. Bam. All right. Nice. Wait, one more? I did it fucking not portrait because I'm dumb. <laughs> Give me a little salute. Bam. Thank you, sir. Sick. You're How on you that uh, social game. Oh, fuck the game, bro. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing Dude, I'm so happy to talk to you because I, I feel like I share the exact same energy about social media with you. Oh, like, brother. You know, like, this is uh... There's a I few keep asking of pro people. comics the same question. I was like, "Do you think these crowd work clips are gonna fuck up stand up comedy shows?" No, like, no, no, no. Like, bad comedy is bad comedy, and I'm like, I don't know, man. I feel like all this social media stuff is making comedians like worse because they're trying to like just get something out there and they're not taking time to actually like develop their art. Yeah, there's definitely. Are we recording already? By the way. Yeah, I just I just started right in. Welcome to the Johnny Rogers Show, everyone. This is Black <laughs> Zeus, Toronto comedian and podcaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just but... want to make it feel like a hang that people are joining in on. Uh that definitely. I think to me personally, that's the best approach. I mean, yeah. that's the best approach on stage, off stage. It's the most um it's the one that allows you to connect the most, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. I've always, I swear to God, bro, from day one, I've always said I'm, my ultimate goal is to get up on that stage and just make it feel like more people have been added to whatever conversation I'm having with mm -hmm. whoever. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like your whole, that was like how I knew that I wanted to be a comedian because I, when I was in high school, like right at the end of high school, I remember I was like, it started with me telling one person about my fat, lazy dog that I had. And all my problems with the dog. And then I looked up after 10 minutes, I was like holding court. There was like five, six, seven people just standing around me listening to this story and laughing. And I was like, oh shit. I was like, yeah, that's like how I, when I think back to that moment, I'm like, that's how I want my stand up to be. Exactly what you just said. Like you're just holding court with these people, telling them like something so interesting, they have to listen to you. Exactly. Not like, bro, but it's, it really is not even just holding court, bro. Cause, I think that's one aspect of it, sure. but it's like a whole other side of the coin to be able to make them feel because it's just you talking up there. Yeah, yeah. You got to make them want to stay feel there. Like you're a part of the conversation. So it's like there's so many different parts to the cook, right? And it's like there's the crowd work. There's the written stuff. There's the off the cuff, but not crowd work shit. It's like. It's you know, a combination people, of so much, you know? People forget about eye contact. When I went Ooh, to see yeah. Louis C.K. Uh, when he was doing his comeback tour, um, and he did, like, the Yuck Yucks in Niagara Falls, that yeah. guy has lethal eye contact. He'll look... Like, I was in the back, dark corner of the room, and I swear to God, it felt like he was looking at me in the eyes when he was delivering punchlines. Like, he has this weird effect where he'll just deliver and stare directly into the crowd and almost like he meets everyone's eyes like he's like constantly like scanning and it just was like it uh, like it immersed you like it pulled you in like you couldn't stop listening to what he was saying hell yeah and bro that, there's so much it's a gift people don't really you just think it's like you don't even know why someone is so good mm -hmm. you know? like most people don't even realize it's like that person is that good because they, bro, there's so many layers to this shit. 
that dude when you get people. your first trick too like you we, we're we're kind of like word magicians in a way right like when you when you figure out your first callback you're like whoa i did it like i made the thing disappear and then reappear like people are gonna forget about this reference and then i'm gonna bring it up again and they're gonna be like oh shit like <laughs> that's hilarious i like the way you refer to that as a trick yeah right it, just, they're like, uh, like tricks of the it trade <laughs> it is like a magic trick mm-hmm. that first callback and shit it's like, and now to make this reappear. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Blow all your goddamn minds. Remember that rabbit I was talking about from earlier? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. I, the, nothing nothing makes me more happy in terms of, like, uh, performance or art or output than being on that stage, bro. I'm not including, obviously, family and all that shit. Like, you sure, know, yeah. Just when it comes yeah, to passion so and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's a good segue to go into. You said your word was grateful. Um, what made you pick grateful as your word? Because I say it 80 times every day. I mean it more and more every time I say it. I'm just like, bro, this extends so far beyond comedy, but is the reason why I also feel like I, I have... How do I word this? I'm so much more optimistic now than I ever have been because of my personal life's journey that I've been able to. Like, I got in a car accident at 22, and that's pretty the way the camera just cut on like the most. The the camera just got to a different angle. It's just like you're you're about to tell like a sad story, and it's just the top of your head. That's actually a better angle if we could stay on that angle. Although you, you miss all the background, but that's a, that's definitely a tighter shot. It's a tighter shot, but wait a second. Can you see me? I can see your head is just in the bottom right-hand corner of the square. <laughs> I don't know what just happened, because if you could see what I see, like... Bro, it just switched. The camera that you're looking at there is what it's on now. It just, like, switched I'm to the, on one camera. the second cam. What? Really? You're on one camera? My second camera's not plugged in, so this is, ha- like... I wish I could show you what I see on my screen. I'm trying to fix this, but oh, I damn. might lose camera for a second. It's all I good. I can always cut in a technical difficulties thing. That's the beautiful thing about not doing this live. I just turned it off and turned it back on, but I, if I have to do that again, I apologize. That will be annoying. It's all good. We'll just I'll just cut around it. Okay. Um, you were saying that when you were younger, you were in a car accident? Yeah, when I was 22, I was in a car accident, and that's the same year I started comedy. So, like, wow, what that that car accident, bro, was my coming to Jesus moment, bro. It were was you driving me. or were you a passenger? I was a passenger. I was a passenger, wow. but I truly consider that the day I was born, bro. Because that's the from that day forward, I it's not even like I almost died. It was a serious enough accident. To, we spun out like four times. We were on the highway. It was during the winter. We hit black ice. Man. All this shit, right? Yeah. And I went unconscious. I woke up to gunpowder. That's the day I found out that the it's gunpowder that makes a airbag go off. You know what I mean? Oh, it just the explosion, up, right? Fire, bro. And uh, and yeah, it was. I was told later on. It's like, yo, that's gunpowder that makes that shit go off so fast. But I, I I came to. I still remember it coming too, bro. Because it's the first time in my life that it, it, I, I've been in many fights. I've never gotten punched out. You know, I've never gotten yeah. my life punched out. So it was very odd, bro. But when I look back at it now, like it was the most necessary thing that I don't even think was accidental. Like, bro, it really forced me to just look in the mirror. That's the that's not the exact day, but around that time was when I stopped mm-hmm. focusing on others and started focusing on myself. Mm. Started piecing together why I was like I was an angry kid, which makes okay. a lot of sense when you realize by the time I was 22, I'd moved 13 times, bro. Like that's it's countries, a reason. Cities, that's multiple times within cities. That's multiple yeah. schools. Yeah, so dude. I, and like uh, you know the typical fucking immigrant, you know, well, yeah. single parent home. You know what yep. I mean? So I, bro, I went through Dante's Inferno, bro. I went through my seven stages of hell, and that car accident was the day that I entered heaven, bro. And I didn't even realize it yet, but it forced me to just look in the fucking mirror, stop focusing on other people. I realized what gossip is, man. Mm -hmm. Like The whole reason anybody would gossip is because it's so much harder to look in the mirror and address 
those issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easier for me to be like, yo, I saw Johnny do something. Let me go tell some comics. I yeah, suppose yeah. let me go sit by myself in silence, which might create anxiety because now I'm forced to think about why I'm in the position I'm why in. Why are you bothered by that? Yeah, 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 yeah. What was really? There, there's nothing better the, the moment that i heard someone say oh, oh i'm living in his head rent free i was like oh that's the attitude i'm gonna adopt fuck what anyone thinks about what i'm doing because if they're thinking about what i'm doing i'm living in their head rent free and yeah. i'm not even thinking about them i'm thinking about the shit i want to do and that to me is like that's when you really reclaim like your own independence as a human where you're like fuck what anyone thinks like that that should be the That's least of your worries it's so much harder it's, it's easier said than done sure oh yeah it's a big growing period and a lot of pain leading up to that for sure and, and it's like a consistent battle bro because yeah, it doesn't happen overnight that's that's for damn sure bro i'm telling you from 22 to 27 was a complete full circle transformation when at the, when i hit 27 i really do consider that like clean slate i had mm. really truly figured out all my traumas quote unquote all the negative aspects about myself yeah. and i had dedicated the the rest of my life to never getting back to that low of a level you yeah I mean? yeah yeah and, and it took from 22 to 27 for me to really like okay i clean slate i Unpack know it all finally let's actually be me and that was a whole other set of challenges bro that took from 27 to just now like my early 30s you know, like 33, 34. Yeah. Only now do I really understand like that unfuckwittable nature, bro. Like when you say that live rent free comment, bro, like it, it resonates with me because I had someone recently like the more vocal you become about anti-establishment ideas. Yeah. And rhetoric, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the more attackers you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I All always like sudden, to tell people I'm playing devil's advocate and they're always like, oh, gosh, <laughs> I'm getting random niggas hating on me like out yeah, of nowhere, yeah. bro. And I'm not I'm not I'm not no one, man. There's people yeah. with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers. I just got a couple thousand. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm, I'm just out here just doing my thing, not giving a fuck. I was chasing that. I was chasing the algorithm for a minute because mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I started comedy 12 years ago, bro. Yeah, when I started. You didn't have Same here, to. man fucking go down the meme route you didn't have to you had to have an online presence and all that stuff absolutely that makes sense we're not dinosaurs but when you start to force creativity down a certain path that is completely controlled and at this point is controlled by ai or whatever the fuck yeah whatever controls the algorithm like the way tiktok works man it doesn't just incentivize viewership it incentivizes the creator in a certain aspect yes they keep yeah moving the goal post every five seconds but this is a new form of this a similar pressure and that's why it's always important to have like uh voices like yourself where you don't really care what the current measure of success is because i you know i was just listening to theo vaughn talking to tom segura and they were talking about how before you know social media everyone wanted a sitcom that was just what you did you had to shape your act to hopefully get it turned into a sitcom because that was seemed like the only way that you can make money at this and and have a comfortable living so people were like forcing characters into their act and like doing all this goofy shit like they'll they'll bring a ukulele on stage and just whatever they could to like get this well, sitcom right like time, like uh stage music like this seinfeld music yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they all had to have a shtick right like and then with social media you saw like people exploding on social media so now that's become the current measure of success but like what what's important is just like what are your independent goals beyond what you think success is because what we think success is is just like what we've been shown success is like what the industry validates as success but like success should be up to you like if if all you care about is like having a good time increasing your art maybe like doing as many hour specials as you can then that's success to you um so let's if, pause at this moment for a second because yeah, that's yeah. so important and i think like and i don't even think i know because i felt i felt for it bro it's the same thing as education, bro. You don't even realize that you 
you think a specific type of way because you were taught to think a specific type of way. Yeah, yeah. You are when you get into any art or any medium, I would imagine, even any job, bro. You function in a in a manner that you've learned from watching that thing. You've yeah. never done the thing. Like before I started comedy, every comedian, I would imagine, you're like, these are my favorite comics. I'm going to try and emulate them. Yes, yeah, and yeah. And the number one piece of advice you always hear, most important piece of advice, and one that you hear since childhood, fuck any art. Like people always tell you, be yourself. Mm-hmm. Be yourself. And and I heard that a, a thousand times. And I and I took it and I'm like, you know what? I understand. Just be myself. Working towards be yourself on stage. Bro, until you actually hit that fucking moment, like that epiphany moment of like, oh, be yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I you know, know what exactly I mean? what you mean. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Like, yeah, you hear it. Doing. You hear it forever and it's just like kind of empty words. You're like, how can I be myself when I don't know who I am? Like what you're so you're too young to hear that. But it's like you need to hear that. You need to get that seed planted so that one day when you finally meet that measure of a better understanding of who you are, it clicks of how to be yourself. Like this podcast is my expression of being myself. Like I love like hanging and chatting with people and like come like having revelations like this in conversation and i'm like it's also a chance for anybody who follows me to like actually get to know me a little better there's not like it's not like highly edited and you've cut out every breath that i take so it sounds like every sentence i say is super clear and concise like podcasts are gonna have some um some ahs some like silence for a bit while you think about something and that's like who I want to be on stage as well, too. I don't want to be scared of silence, you know, trying to fill that with like a, a laugh of my own or whatever. You know, the one thing I never heard, and I swear to God, this might be the most actual important thing anybody could ever hear going into anything. People told me all sorts of advice. Be yourself. This and that. Fucking here's a tag. Here. No one ever said define your terms right fucking now. Define mm. what it is you want out of this yeah. right now. Yeah. Define what it is that you want out of it. Be willing to, like, not necessarily give, like, you got to adapt, not necessarily change, but you got to adapt because obviously challenges will come your way and you might not be able to get it exactly how you want immediately. But over time, if you build up enough, you know, rep or whatever the fuck, skill connections all that stuff you get to do what you want kind of you know what i mean no uh, uh, i think it's been shown that like you get to do what you want once you reach a level of success Correct. You know? but, but, bro, defining your terms sets it up so that you don't end up just going for the trends man yeah man yeah so a thousand percent perspective like fuck even social media i spent so much of my early career just tunnel vision i need just for laughs i need just for laughs Mm -hmm. laughs. bro like there's i don't even want to get into the full dynamic of it but it's like just for laughs is a corporate festival that has like you you look at the entire lineup and it's like yo there's spots to fill and essentially we have Charmin commercials to sell this is any festival not just just for laughs yeah yeah, yeah. the, the, the the more concentrated problem for canadian comics is that like look at an american comic looking at just for laughs it's just a notch in the belt to them True, but truly the yeah comic, it is our fucking meal ticket out of here bro it yeah. is like yo, you have that credit okay you've done it is like the and the ceiling's so low in canada already that once you get that it makes it easier to get your green card moving to the states and all that shit yeah dude i have a perfect analogy on that i don't want to cut you off but like my okay. buddy was telling me about like he goes he re- he's like i realized that like no matter where you live, you're just playing a game of Monopoly. And depending on where you hit the lottery of where you're born, the game of Monopoly might be harder, it might be easier. But if you want to leave that place and go play a different game of Monopoly somewhere else, like for us, we want to move 25 you know, kilometers south and go into the US and play that game of Monopoly, you need to win the game of Monopoly in your current country. And to Canadian comedians, that means like, just for laughs, Winnipeg Comedy Festival. Like it means checking off these boxes where people are like, oh, you have value. Yeah. And it's like, it, no. Waiting for other people to give you your value, yeah. which is 
fucking crazy fucked. and it's demoralizing. Really, it's never going to fucking happen the way you value yourself. No. So what the internet has really done for us, what these SoundCloud rappers figured out years ago, and what comedy is finally starting to catch up to. But this is why I think the whole social media trap and TikTok and trends and all this fucking algorithm horseshit, yeah. like they they set this up on purpose because they like. If you are the structure, you know, if you're the music business, the movie business or whatever the fuck, and then all of a sudden people figured out that they could just independently pop off on their own with 500 bucks, 100 mm-hmm. bucks, zero dollars, bro, online and reach everybody in the world. Like if you control that structure, you're not going to set it up so that everybody could just fucking have free reign. Yeah. You know, like, even look at the, like all these algorithms are constructed in a certain way. Certain videos, I t- yo, I love that I don't give a fuck about this social media stuff because I literally run tests on my social media. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Let me post some tits and ass, fucking thousands of views. Let me post a real conversation, couple hundred views. Yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. post, like, you know what I mean? That's like my YouTube page, dude. It's just like one big experiment. I'm like, let me try a news video about like whatever kids getting banned at the movie theater for wearing suits, like such a random clickbaity title 20,000 views yeah. let me post my act my stand-up set that i had worked on for years a couple hundred if you're lucky you know what i mean like because then people are like who the fuck is this guy but a second you play you like give some sort of value to someone in some way uh i heard mr b say this he's like anytime you hear the word algorithm replace that with audience People will say things like the algorithm didn't like it. It's like the audience it was shown to didn't like it because what they're being exposed to is a multitude of choice. Mm -hmm. And so they are like kings and queens, just freely like next jester, next jester, next jester, like someone entertain me. And so now you have to like force your art in a way that like hooks people Yo, I have to. Yo, you need something in the first three seconds to make these people yeah, fucking like, do, 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 do. Yo, you better fucking write the like yo, fucking. That doesn't mean it's good shit. for you. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean it's good art because it has like a hook to it. It just means but people are impatient. One thing I figured out in comedy itself, and and like this just extends to the online thing is like everybody mm-hmm. considers themselves a whatever. And I don't even think most of these content creators consider themselves artists. They consider themselves influencers or content creators. Yeah. Stuff. Like true artists, obviously, like you are passionate about the craft of comedy and, and, and it shows. And that's the reason you're having this pushback to this shit. Mm-hmm. But it's, I, I feel like I also had to very much uh, get in the right frame of mind about this because it's, it's not even about being negative towards like our homies that are doing this shit. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I started getting vocal online, I, they took it as personal. I tax. was hesitant, bro. Yeah, what yeah, I yeah, yeah. realized is like, oh, okay, oh, this is all just a game of persona. Yeah. So everybody, like, like not the actual video game. I've never played that. Fucking, it's really nerdy. But I know it is. Oh, I don't know what that is. Okay, good. I, I took well, it as terms of persona. Like I knew what you meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't even realize there was a video game called that. Like everybody picks a lane. Is like, yo, this is my yes. avatar, my character now. Yeah. It was like, well, all right, nigga, if this is the case. Then I want to be the fucking one that just really talks shit about come on, bro. Because we're all having the real conversations it's behind. My, it's my art. favorite content, dude. Like your clips from your podcast, you're just like, yeah, fuck these NPC people. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are we doing, bro? Because we're all yeah, having these conversations yeah. behind closed doors, and then when we leave, the allure of it is so much. It's 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 not even that it is easier, bro. Because our friends are are putting in effort. Anybody yeah. creating this and popping off, like there's effort I'm going into it. Like on every one of my friends' videos, yeah. on anybody that I like, I'm hitting. Li- I don't even care, yeah. bro. If it's a meme that I t- I technically don't give a shit about, I bro. Still I heard Che Che Durena was on um Bert Kreischer's podcast, mm-hmm. and like you know, I worked with Che at the the YouTube channel and stuff, and and we kind of just like see each other in passing as we're writing scripts or whatever. We're all doing the same thing, but. After that, he was going home and like making TikToks for an hour when nobody was doing that. And he was saying he was saying on the podcast that he would like purposefully try to write like three, at least three jokes into like what he was doing. And I'm like, okay, so that's someone who's 
realizes what the game is, sees other people popping off onto it, and then goes, okay, I'm going to do this, but like, how can I do it in a way that also enhances this other thing that I love, which is stand-up comedy? It's the jokes, including the jokes into it. Like, you can't just make content for content's sake. There has to be yeah. value to either you or to a viewer. You can. Like, you can. Though, you definitely can, but it's not this, good. This way, but we can't be jaded. Like, that, I think that's also a very important uh, sure. distinction to make. Is like, I have no ill will towards anybody who chooses to go down that path. Yeah. But, like, it's, to me, it seems to be, like, what's the Venn diagram? What's the fucking, the circles? You know, the yeah, overlap? Yeah, the Venn diagram, yeah, yeah. It seems to be a Venn diagram where there's a lot of overlap between people who go down this route and then also people who are very bought into like the current divisive culture who will complain mm, yeah, yeah, about yeah. Art being dead or, or, you know, like, or some variant of that ideology yeah. It's like, yo, the game is fucking rigged. The game is fucked up. Well, hello, dummy. You contributed it. Like you contributed to the game being fucked up because you said, Hey, okay, boss. Let me fucking shuck and jive for you, bro. Like, me as a black man, I have an extra intense feeling about this shit because it's just literally putting niggas in dresses again. It's like, but now everybody's niggas in dresses. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool if you actually want to do that. Yes. For my personal experience, and again, this is a small pool of, you know, like, this is a small uh, polling, you know what I mean? Like, because I yeah. only know the Southern Ontario comedy community intimately and the people within it. But I would imagine you can extrapolate the data and be like, this is pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. People said one thing when we got into this game. I want to do this. I want to be the best on stage or this and that. And then the, someone dangled a new carrot and said, hey, social media will get you ticket sales. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A <laughs> hundred million followers. People will think you're cool. <laughs> and then... As there's as they dangling the carrot, you could fill a theater with forty minutes you don't have. <laughs> exactly. Like, what are we doing? You yeah, obey. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't define your terms that you're willing to just yeah. fucking. Yeah. It, because it's about. It's not about. I want to be fucking the best. I want to be the very best. <laughs> no one ever was. No, nigga. You just want clout. Yeah, clout. yeah, yeah. yeah. Say it outright, like. I'll say it. The reason why I make these short news videos is because I'm good at it. I own a teleprompter. I, I've worked on YouTube channels that do very similar things. So my built-in audience almost expects that from me after I've given them that type of content for the last four years. Yeah. And it's a good way to grow my channel so that people will hopefully stay and watch my podcast. If 1% of the 50,000 people that see a news story stay and watch the podcast, I'm winning because I'm just trying to get come over here. Just come and stay, come and stay, come and stay. And just doing that over and over and over again. But Let it's exhausting. You. Like, oh, Sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, no, 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 no. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say, it's like the way you're speaking, it seems like you're more comfortable with because you got to realize when we go our own route, I'm sure you realize it's like it's a longer route. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you don't when you don't go for the dangling carrot. It's a much longer route. Like for me, Nipsey Hussle really instilled this fucking idea in, in my mind years and years ago when I first started listening to him. He always identified the music business to him as a marathon. It's like he was going to do it his way. He was offered record contracts. Yeah. Turned them down because they didn't they didn't value him the way he valued himself. And brick by brick, eventually he built a brick wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that really helped me. Once I really adapted that mindset, I swear to God, bro, it was maybe like three to five years into my comedy career. It was the first time I took a real deep breath. I was like, okay, what do I actually want out of this? I'm starting to get decent. I know that I'm going to get so much better. And I know mm -hmm. that there isn't a plateau on that, bro. Like, so I was so fixated on that that I kind of put the business side of show business on the back burner. But I built myself up. And, and not that I put it all the way on the back burner. Yeah, know, yeah. I would always take notes, take lessons, produce yeah. shows, apply those lessons, put on my own comedy special, sold out a theater, did all this and that, you know? So I know I've had videos go viral, this and that. I know that, and not even just that, I've given ideas away that I, I, my yeah. homies have made money on, man. Yeah, I've yeah, given yeah. ideas away. I'm not concerned with, okay, now let me, I can apply that really easily and be like, I'll pop and fucking 
get 100,000 followers overnight by doing Fart Mondays every fucking Monday. Watch me fart on my Instagram, <laughs> social media feed, and TikTok. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm watching my social media feed, like followers go up daily at, at increments that are in the tens. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but that's it's going up. Because I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I, yo, yeah, yeah. It didn't go up. There's days where nothing goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like, like it's, it's inconsequential to what you do already. We I'm, did it before I, there was social media. We'll do it after there's social media. Correct. I have to create, bro. When, yeah, this, yeah. when the power gets shut down, I'll be in the streets just trying to tell jokes for everybody who's crying and trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah, man, because it's good for the soul. That's why we do it. Like we we as people and I, I honestly think like, you know, people say this all the time, like comedy is my therapy. But I think like pursuing any passion in a way that really helps you look inward on yourself. And like, I love what you were saying about from 22 to 27 was when you kind of healed through everything, because I had a friend who was talking to me about like a big decision that he had to make. And uh, he was telling me, and I've known this guy since we were, since uh, 10 years old, you know what I mean? Like, no, like one of my oldest friends. Yeah. And uh, he was like, yeah, but you know, X happened when I was like 20. And I was like, yeah, but you were 20 then you're a different person now. And so what you're doing is you're applying an old trauma that you thought you had dealt with. And it's actually impacting who you are now and your, your current decisions that you have to make. But like for someone like yourself, like all you have to worry about is new trauma that might come up and you're like, Oh, I'll deal with it. Then I dealt with my old trauma. Now I'll just deal with new trauma as it comes. And you're not allowing older trauma to impact what you're doing. And I think what we're seeing with social media is a lot of people doing that. They're traumatized and they haven't dealt with it and they need that attention. And so they're willing to do anything, including the, dropping their morals with the influx of fake self-help. Mm -hmm, everything, mm -hmm. everything is so more. It's everything is multiplied. All the bullshit is multiplied. Yeah. So it's, it's hard. And now we're getting into AI and, and you don't even know if you're looking at something real or hearing someone that actually is speaking. Yeah. Like, how are we going to decipher anything going forward? And what, to go back to what you just said, that was a very big epiphany moment for me in my life. I really did realize what a midlife crisis is. It's people who don't check it. Like, I'm so grateful that I checked my shit at a young enough age that I didn't have that much shit to check. And, mm -hmm. like, you also have to take into account, like, yo, some people's traumas are fucking massive. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that I didn't have traumas so, so grave that, like, I needed therapy like i went through some shit bro that a lot of people wouldn't be able to deal with but for me it was i like I, it was nothing i couldn't figure out it was more important to figure it out because i knew there was a higher version of myself to get to and that fucking car accident was a wake-up call but it's yeah. like a midlife crisis is someone who's never checked their baggage until they're married they wake up in a bed next to someone they just realized they hate but guess what you got kids a mortgage a job you fucking hate and you're locked into this shit, so you fucking your hair falls out, and you buy a motorcycle. And then your so, doctor tells you you got cancer, and then you find a teenager at a high school, and you start making crack in the desert. And... That's really good. <laughs> you know, we, should, we should write a show. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's that's like what can happen though to somebody with a midlife crisis is like they, all of a sudden their whole extreme. world starts falling apart. <laughs> yeah, Breaking Bad is the extreme. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, I always take it to the furthest extreme just to show how <laughs> how far down the rabbit hole it can get. Like the funniest thing I love, well, it's not even like really funny, but it, when I talk to people about like how the government just has like a monopoly on force, they're like, I don't yeah. know what you mean by that. I'm like, well, here, here's what I mean by that. Let's say you don't pay your mortgage payment. You refuse. I'm not going to pay my mortgage payment. The company then sends that to, the bank sends it to collections and the collection starts calling you nonstop. You got to pay this, you got to pay this. You refuse. You don't call them, okay? Then they send someone to your house, uh, maybe a, an agent from the collection agency, and you refuse. You tell them to fuck off. And so they go to the police and then the police come to your door and you tell them to fuck off. And then they use force to bring you into the police station for resisting arrest. And that is a monopoly on force where if you don't pay, you can't play. Like you get locked up and like yeah. any situation like that, you can take it to the furthest extreme. And I find that really helps with like people making decisions. Like maybe I will deal with my trauma. Well, there's only so much of it, you know, and I won't just ignore it and push it down. But what you do in that, 
like by doing that you develop a process in which you identify trauma address it and heal from it mm-hmm. when you do that enough times guess what happens when when you it's coming towards you as opposed to you looking behind you and fucking trying to address old shit yeah you run away literally from it. see the shit coming towards you and you're like yo i don't even need this person in my life or i'm gonna remove myself from this scenario or whatever it may be yeah but that's exactly what happened to me and that's why now i really am i'm fucking floating bro like i'm, I'm floating through life as as the world is burning around me somehow i'm in heaven on earth bro uh-huh. like i don't know man did someone someone make it make, i can make it make sense of but course it's like you know Yo, what's lived experience is insane, like, isn't it? <laughs> it's so important. To it's me. like being a mushrooms trying to communicate what's happening. You're like, I can't, I couldn't possibly tell you in words mm-hmm. what well, this that happens means. All the time to me. It takes a minute for me sometimes to to really convey the, this shit because I've had a very spiritual life, man. Like, like I've literally went through seven stages of hell, man. Like wow. when I say my life has been Dante's Inferno, who, who moves that many times? It's not normal. You know, so I, it was sink or swim. My entire life has been sink or swim. And then getting spit on when I was a little kid, like literally under five for being black in Jesus. London, Ontario, having to process that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just yeah. so, but still, I'm here. You don't know happiness without sadness. You cannot have joy without pain. Once you kind of come to accept that in life, fuck, man. It, it yeah. feels... If it feels different, you move different and you're not as affected by all the bullshit like during COVID. Holy fuck. During that pandemic, you really you really saw people then. You know what I mean? And it really revealed people who was really mentally stable and who wasn't. bro. Uh And it created a lot more instability, which I think was a a part of the goal of the whole fucking. Yeah, let's be honest. Time, yeah, one hundred percent. It's, it's like, the the reset from the WEF. It's the new American century that they were trying to form as well as part of all those like regime change wars. Like, oh, yeah, baby, it, you know, you know, never let a good pandemic go to waste, right? Like, they got to live up to that obelisk in Washington D.C. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> the one that's strikingly everywhere. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, let's oh, take it just happens to be. Oh, it's also in Peru. Oh, I guess we should put it. Let's just dismiss it as a male penis thing, you know? Like, (laughs) it's possibly be Masonic or whatever the fuck they're called. (laughs) Yo, (laughs) we're gonna get taken off YouTube, dude. We didn't even mention the Maxine (laughs) and London, the city are all all sovereign states. Okay, sure. Why is that? Anyways, (laughs) tell me why they're all paid by BlackRock. Yo, it's really interesting to see. I think that's why they have to flood the knowledge now. Mm-hmm. You have to muddy the waters. You have to put every, because aliens, everything. Aliens, you know what there. I mean? Exactly. So it's like, the we're all like, whatever. Cover up the real truth <laughs> yeah. is by just throwing out so much shit yeah. that people don't even know that if they're looking at real truth or not. So it's Yeah, like, bro. I'm, I'm getting offline, bro. Like, I'm starting to read books. Like, holy shit. <laughs> I never read books. An analog life. What a what a altering what an altering um, life shift that was for me. You know what I mean? You I feel know. accomplished too when you finish a book and you like you see the the bookmark moving every time you pick it up. You know, you're yeah. like a little further ahead. You feel like these little mini accomplishments in your own like uh, mind and and sense of like what you're doing in this world. That's that's the importance to me also of books and reading oh. books. Hell yeah, man. Uh, different perspective. And and it helps you use your imagination, which is something you should never. Uh, yeah, it's like a muscle, bro. You should never let that. Um... And a book doesn't allow you to open a new tab and just go to watch porn or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just reveal something about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm reflecting larger society when it comes to attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, porn is a whole other uh... construct. I stopped watching porn like. Oh yeah, it's it fucks like, with your brain for sure. Holy shit, bro! It's not even cool. It's not even like doesn't even make sense. Like people are all worried about like drag queen story hour. I'm like, you know, your son has access to gang bags anytime he wants, right? Like I think that's a little more traumatizing. 
It's like gang face fucks. Yeah, it's re- insane shit. And it's like, all like familial. It's like, hey, stepmom. Step yeah, it's all familial. All That's the craziest shit. thing. <laughs> I'm like, yo, why are we pushing this family porn thing? We're just who's, devolving. Who's, who's, who's pushing this agenda? Yeah, like what's what's? I don't know. It's it's so weird to me, bro. Yeah, man. So, I- you know what's the? I think the ultimate thing for me, the weirdest thing to me, in society as a whole. Is how everybody's so vocal about trauma and and negative aspects of this and that and mm-hmm. you know fucking toxic masculinity and and whore culture and all this stuff. Yeah. And social media, oh man, this shit is all awful. But nobody has stopped using it. No. Like we and this yeah. is what I like. This is to the full circle. What I started with. It's the same people that go with the flow that end up complaining about it being an issue. I'm like, you're going with the flow. How about consider learning to not be on your phone? I know that sounds fucking drastic. Yeah. But (laughs) I'm very, once again, I'm grateful that I have an entire life's experience before internet and cell phones. Same here, man. I'm grateful I am for that. That I have like core memories, not just like I was like six. No, nigga, I was like a a fucking, I was like 10, 12, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, internet cell phones i didn't have a so phone like, really like, till college just not knowing shit you yeah just didn't know and then you figured it out i remember instagram being created and twitter being created when i was in college and i was like what is this like i don't want to go to a new website like i got facebook like we're good <laughs> you know what i mean like I, I connect with all my friends on facebook and then it That's became true. like a game like it, it, insane i you know what blows my mind too is like I'm so grateful that I had a childhood where people weren't always sticking cameras in my face trying to get me to do something like kids nowadays are being constantly like filmed and photographed. And like every time they see a phone point at them, they're like, OK, sh- hush, time for the show. <laughs> like, What do you want me to do? I seem to they seem to love me when I do something cute in front of this camera. And then it just it's going to change their behavior. Mm. I, I I don't know, man. There's so good. many different aspects of the of the. Like, what are we even considering entertainment anymore? Yeah. Putting a camera in someone's face has has so drastically warped. Now it's literally fucking walking up behind a family that's just shopping at Walmart on a Tuesday trying to get diapers and shit. Yeah. And like, with a cardboard tube and being like, <laughs> Like, getting in someone's fucking ear and doing that horse shit. I hope <laughs> someone's listening to this in their car and it's just blaring. I'm not going to lie. I laughed the first yeah, time. Yeah, sure. Watching, but this nigga's whole career is this. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no ideas. You contribute nothing. But but because you have the million plus followers and shit. Yeah. Yeah. You And, and you're making the money because we value the wrong shit. Mm-hmm. And and if you find yourself having a lot of uh, trauma that you feel like you can't handle, if you find yourself being depressed, if you have a lot of anxiety and shit, but you're using all these apps and you're and you constantly give a fuck about what Lizzo's doing to her backup singers and the Beyonce tour that was just around, and that's all the shit that you care to talk about, well, congratulations, you're fucking dumb, and you did it to yourself. Like you, you're feeding into it without even realizing, bro. Sit down yeah. and watch the movie They Live. Go do that, you fucking bonkers human being, and realize that you're just a zombie. Like you're just a z- 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 zombie. Uh, yeah. And I'm just done. I'm done. I'm done with it. Like, don't need to participate in it. Salutes to all my homies that are doing it. Salutes to everybody I don't know doing it and yeah. finding great success. You're just like not for me, bro, like Johnny. I'm getting out of comedy exactly what I want out of it. Yeah. And that's enough for me, baby. That's and the and best somehow way. I continue to progress, not just on stage, but in the business side of this shit. Mm-hmm. Somehow I'm still in the same fucking rooms. I'm uh, sure I don't have the full just for last Montreal credit. I have a just for last Toronto credit. Like I'm I'm and and is that credit the thing that validates me? Yeah. I don't look for anybody to validate me you know what validates me is when i'm constantly headlining now 
when I'm constantly being asked to close shows, when I'm not closing shows, I'm constantly being the one that the audience is running up to after the show, being like, you're the best. You were the favorite. Not even yeah, that I look yeah, for that. Yeah. And that is kind no, of no. gross because you're kind of putting other people down in front of them. It's, it's a weird thing. <laughs> but it is also a marker. I'm not so naive to dismiss that entirely. No. I, I look for real world validation. Yeah, not dude. fucking horseshit that somebody at a whim could be like, you know what? The thing that was validation yesterday, we just moved the goalpost. You need yeah. to do this and this and this. A million followers isn't enough. Now you need ten. You need, yeah. you need thirty. You need fifty. Yo, you don't have a hundred million followers, bro. You're not yeah. successful. Hey, suck my big black dick <laughs> from the back, as Mero would say. Shout out to Jesus and Mero. I think I just fucked some shit up in my studio. But from the back. <laughs> Yo, there's a question that I always ask the guests too: is if you can make a phone call. The 15 year old Mike and give him a piece of advice based on what you know now. Uh, what would you say, knowing that it won't affect your current timeline either? This is a separate alternate universe. But you're 15 in this call. This before, but my path has been so perfect for me that I wouldn't tell myself a fucking thing. You just laugh on the other end and hang up. And observe and laugh, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, Nigga, I'm 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 God on earth, bro. <laughs> like I'm not religious, I, but I believe that. Like I, I'm not even saying this from a religious aspect. No, I know what you mean though. Like the, the the saying the kingdom of God is within, I love that statement because I'm like, yeah, we're all God. Okay. Like it's it's in here, like it's in your mind. You know what I mean? Like you create what you want to create out in front of you, and the world reflects it. Or destroy. Or destroys it. Yeah. I'm like, that's that's what a god does, you know? Yeah, bro. It's like, yo, when Kanye was sitting up there, I just told you who I think I am. <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought that nigga was crazy when I first heard that. But yeah. the more I live, the more I breathe, the more I think and reflect, pray, meditate, whatever. I do this shit, bro. Like, yeah. I think, I, I think about where I've come from because that's the only way I know where I'm fucking going. Mm -hmm. And now I have to find my own terms and no one can do that shit for me. Bro, I'm an infinite being, nigga. Fuck with me. You can't. <laughs> like, let's let's go, bro. Let's, let's go. I do the t-shirt slogans everywhere. <laughs> I'm an infinite being. I'm an infinite being. Fuck with me on the back. <laughs> ah, Ah shit! I know he just ripped on like all your social media stuff, but uh, go to aka blackzeus.com. Check out aka Black Zeus on YouTube as well as on Instagram and on X. I gotta remember to say X and not Twitter because now it's gonna get to the point. If you say Twitter, people will be like, "Oh, you're an old man." <laughs> you remember it as Twitter? Uh, not yet, but like, give it another couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. That shit is X, though, bro. They took the sign off the building and they replaced it with a big X. I love you, man. This was a great combo. Yeah, man. This is great. Yo, I'm going to have to come back because we didn't even talk about AI. Yeah. Oh, no. And I could go off on AI fucking shit. all day. Let's uh, let's do 10 minutes on AI to tease these people. <laughs> what are your thoughts on AI? Uh, it's... Come on, bro. With this whole transhuman shit. I don't want to be a robot. I like being a human being. You don't want to be an eternal being that can travel interstellar? I am. Nigga. <laughs> I am. Yeah, so why do it's I need in to here? Yeah, yeah. Yo, why do I'm I'm a natural infinite being? Why do I need to plug into an unnatural system? Why do I need like we're Dude, once they figure out what the, the spirit, spirit is, once they figure out what consciousness is tangibly. Yeah. If scientists ever discover that, like, oh, this part of the brain, that's our conscious. That's the spirit molecule. Once they figure that out, they're going to take that and they're going to put you into a computer. And then it's game over for humans at that point. Because yeah, remember, if you watch Star Wars, you know, they can't clone force sensitive beings. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but uh, they can do. They, they somehow figured out. They literally look at the, you can pull up an article, bro. They said by the end of this year, will be able to upload your consciousness into a hard drive. Wow. So, so that's not, is that just your memories? Is that your thoughts? Yeah. Is that, or is that your spirit, soul, whatever the fuck, however mm -hmm. you want to put it. You know what I mean? Like, what is that that they're uploading? I always think of like Avatar and like how they, when they go into those 
creatures they're they're they kind of like have shaky legs at first and i'm like yeah that would be a fucking trip to like wake up in a body that's foreign like i couldn't imagine even like imagine what that would begin to feel like you know and is everybody going in are all the politicians going in they better go in first are all the elites quote unquote the elites going in or are they going to stay in physical human natural form they're going to be eating berries that make them live for 200 years or some shit. We all going to be eating cricket protein while they have grass-fed steaks in a private fucking farm? When you know Clive Schwab say you will own nothing and be happy. Look, let's ask the fucking serious questions here. This yeah. is all for the greater good, right? So are we all doing this as a greater good? Or is this just for certain people that can't afford organic food now? You know? Yeah. Organic food. Isn't all food supposed to be organic? It's food. <laughs> oh, you froze there on me. Uh, your arm is just like okay you're good you're good that was hilarious <laughs> your arm was just frozen like part way through that's the <laughs> ai trying to shut this shit down it's like stop talking yeah. about us well i mean you know who owns zoom no <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just saw a look in your eye you're like oh, like, oh shit let's keep the podcast going yeah yeah <laughs> fuck i'm gonna have to find a new sur- video service to <laughs> <fucking>. <laughs> some pirate pay shit that's so funny uh, no but ai scares me because i'm like it's gonna radically change like the school system the way we work like it's it just is and it doesn't seem like it's gonna stop and it seems like this is my is the first iteration of it that we're seeing a year ago we didn't even know what this was and now it's super complex and just in our face and people use it every day chat gpt all that shit like there's gonna be comedians where their whole act is chat gpt 100 you won't even know it, and then guess what like you can have whole virtual comedians now yeah think about you think about um what's that comedy club in in the uh the metaverse? metaverse yeah oh yeah yeah there's a couple of them now that's popped up like tyler morrison has uh one yeah that one that's the one i'm trying to uh, yeah uh and decentraland and is the decentraland place but it's club. decentral comedy is the yeah, decentral yeah okay so, like, at, at a certain point, it's exactly what you said, but they won't even be performing, like, in live clubs. You'll be able to have whole acts, shows generated through AI. Yeah. And then plug that in through Unreal Engine, because now you can make photorealistic shit. At, yeah, like, bro. At a button, Add right? that to holograms? Exactly, bro. It's over. You can go watch Richard Pryor at the Apollo or something. Just hologrammed in. They just AI Richard Pryor type jokes based on new trending stuff. It comes out with all new material that sounds like him. It looks like him. But then just partway through the act, you know, he gives a little shout out to Coca-Cola. He's like, shout out Pfizer. Like, they're just going to be making him say shit. Oh, it's the Tupac uh, hologram. All oh, my God. 10.0. That was wild. This is, our future. this is our future, bro. How do we stop it? We got to take an axe to like a it's machine or something. Stop it. This is why, like, bro. <laughs> no, no, there's not... a machine that we could destroy and that'll stop it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> No, bro. This is the yin and yang of life. There can't be good without bad. There can't yes, be positive yes, without yes, negative. Yes. There can't be like, you need the bullshit so that you can have the good shit. And it makes the good shit even better, right? When people exactly. see originality and authenticity, they go, ooh, I like that. It's spicy. It's different. It's like... And that's the lasting shit. When the internet goes down, when all the power goes out, guess yeah. what? Your painting is going to mean a lot more on the wall. Than on know? NFT. Correct. <laughs> like It's going to mean a lot more. The sculpture that you have is going to mean a lot more. Yeah. Someone's going to dig that up. Someone will dig up your computer and not know what to do with it. Maybe. I mean, maybe they're probably not going forward, but that's the scary thing too, is like if our, if, if, if an asteroid came like it has before and wipes everything out and puts us back into the stone age, there is no trace of our generation. It's on an invisible thing. It's in the sky. You know what I mean? Like it's, the the history isn't really recorded like it is in the pyramid where it's etched onto a wall or like in these other, you know, what are they called? Megalithic sites. Yeah. All the megalithic sites and stuff. We don't have that shit for our generation. All our shit's made of plastic. It'll just burn and melt up. Yeah, we do. We have white men's faces carved into the side of a fucking sacred. <laughs> that shit will get destroyed. I bet the asteroid hits that first and just demolishes it into a mound. <laughs> I think that would be the most modern thing that, my, unless that mountain gets just, hopefully, you know, that would be that would be some vengeance. Yeah, 
but um, yeah. there'd be yeah, people but... sitting on the nose chipping it off. <laughs> the future isn't scary to me. The future is interesting. Life itself is interesting. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. <laughs> like it's it's. I, I love this shit, bro. I joy. I'm gonna like this will be my final thing because like yeah. I, I'm so mad that I forgot to put up my George Carlin canvas up there. I have like a bunch of canvas pieces, but this guy right here, bro. Yeah, he said it best. I've adapted a new ideology. I, I I'm just here for the show. I don't I have no side in in the battle. Yeah. I'm just watching from the middle and just eating popcorn. I'm rooting for the asteroid. That's literally what he said. I'm rooting for the asteroid to come and to take us all out. Yeah, yeah. This is all this is all just one big show, man. Yeah, man. So I, I'm not going to be manipulated to t- to pick a side. Just have fun. Exactly. And enjoy the show. Exactly. <laughs> just have fun and enjoy the show because we're all going to die. Maybe, unless you upload yourself and then you're stuck serving virtual fries at a McDonald's online forever and you can't even die from that. In so an have... eternal prison where you can never kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Well, yeah, <laughs> or you can listen to Black Zeus, the podcast. Is that the name it's... of your podcast, too? <laughs> Black Zeus, the podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When do you uh, put your episodes out? Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. All right. Yeah. Sick. You know, I haven't done a virtual guest, but I should start doing that, man. I'll have you on my really? podcast. Hell yeah, man. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd uh, love it because you can do it from, you can get anyone on the podcast. You know what I mean? Like, just exactly. zoom them in. Yeah, exactly. you got a good setup there, too. Yo, much love, man. Thank you. Yeah, dude. I hope you have a great rest of your night. Thanks for chilling with me. You as well, bro, bro. All peace, right. Peace. Later, everybody. Later, man. <laughs> Later, man. Thanks again. I'll message yeah. you. All right. Peace. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 